Hi, good afternoon everyone. Uh, I hope you've had like a good hearty lunch. Uh, I mean, uh, the entire burden of now to wake you guys up with our powerful conversation, I really hope so. Uh, I'm relying on my panel members to kind of tap into your vast experience to kind of help uh, throw some light, right? So today's theme uh, for us is personalization in retail, right? Um, so again, when I was doing my research uh, for this session, what to ask, who all of them are industry stalwarts, uh, so how can we actually make sense or uh, kind of take the conversation into a common path? One of the things that kind of came out uh, was uh, that a lot of brands these days, and I can actually confidently say majority of these brands, are taking the hybrid approach, right? Brands which have been digitally native want to start opening up offline stores or will want to collaborate or partner with other offline chains, as well as vice versa, right? Brands who have predominantly always been offline a kind of also want to uh, set up their own website, have their own commerce platform in place, and then kind of start uh, collecting data, using this data. So again, this is easier said than done. I mean, the entire concept of omni-channel, non-linear customer journey, how do you kind of go about stitching this data? And once you have the data in place, how do you kind of make sure that uh, this data, first of all, that you're confident on that, and then start personalizing around it? So a lot of challenges come along with it, and uh, that's, that's something that I thought we can pick up. So uh, let me just pick up, uh, is, is someone going to pick up uh, their hand, raise their hand, or can I just start picking people to kind of reply? Yes, of course, please, Vinod. So Pragati, thank you very much. Uh, I think uh, uh, what you rightly mentioned, there is a non-linear omni-channel behavior that we are seeing from customers. Yes. Uh, obviously, uh, the customer, she's expecting that there is a, a unified kind of a look for her when she's shopping offline or online and, and vice versa also. But uh, uh, what is also happening is uh, uh, because of this non-linear behavior where she keeps on changing her preferences continuously yes. or change her behavior continuously, there's a lot of strategy that needs to be bought in by the retailers which can actually help understand the data. Because if you 100% rely on the customer data, which is 99% of the times historic, yes. uh, you would end up giving something to the customer where she's already moved ahead on that. Absolutely. And that is something that is very, very important. And, 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 and the data part of it is obviously extremely, extremely complex to work with to start on that one. Because while the customer behaviors keep on changing uh, online, at times she behaves differently, she might go for a for a, for a price ticket which is lower, whereas offline she will end up with a full bag of uh, purchase that she ends up. Uh, but uh, having said that, uh, understanding that data and understanding the complexity and making it easy to understand and ensure that yes. the deliverable or the personalization that we want to build for our customer is brought in is extremely, extremely important. And that is what is the probably the focus. And that is where technologies, uh, uh, including AI, ML, all of those will come into picture and help retailers like us to, to probably understand that in a much better manner and probably make sense out of it. Maybe that's like the... Yes, I, I mean, and I think it's confident, I'm confident enough to say that the more, or the, uh, the more you know your customer, the more you're able to sell to them, right? The higher the chances that they'll end up buying something more. Uh, so, Lokesh, if I can ask you, right? So, I have seen Kaya, for example, you sell a lot of your merchandise online. You have your own shop front. Uh, and then, of course, the services are available in your retail outlet. So, how do you kind of make stitch, first of all, your online, offline data, and then kind of make sense to start personalizing as well? Okay. So, uh, I think uh, if I have to look at the data, you need to understand there are two aspects of the data. One, we are talking about the transactional data. Yeah. Now, there is other data which exists with us, which is like feedbacks, NPS score. These are equally important, which will actually give you an uh, idea that what is the customer's experience. So, these are all soft, soft touch points. So, until unless you do not integrate your data, considering all these soft points, you will never get a right prediction. So if you need to have a, a, a you know, personalized uh, cohorts to be created for a customer, you need to consider all the data which is available with you because we have seen multiple times that NPS plays a bigger role yes. in the picture. So yes. 
feedback is something which should you should always uh, ensure that you're trying to collect as much as you can because the more feedback you have the more uh, uh, you know nurtured your data is and the chances of you giving a personalized experience to the client uh, must you know would be much better yes yes and if i can ask you dharma uh, what what is your opinion on this any I, i can't stress more on the importance of personalization and how critical it is to understand consumer journeys um especially uh, for our recent launch which is our beauty uh, business beauty yeah, app uh, where we have uh, this is based on lot of feedback we have taken from consumers that we are coming in in year 2023 uh, there are lot of already existing e-commerce players there are lot of existing beauty players uh, what is uh, the consumer problem that exists today uh, where it is easy to buy online and offline uh, practically in all our uh, uh, direct indirect research it pointed towards consumer asking the question uh, what is best suited for me and this uh, especially in beauty uh, they feel that uh, beauty as a category is very unrewarding cycle of experimentation you don't know what is the best product for me and i keep trying till i hit the right product and hence the need for uh, as a platform as a brand to know consumers really well on one hand and understand the brands and products that we sell really well and find the match uh, how do you match the right product to right customer right content to right customer and hence the importance of uh, personalization uh, for us also uh, we believe uh, any amount of data is uh, insufficient to be able to be proactive predictive in sort of bringing forth what is needed for that customer Uh, we have created a platform which takes in more than 130 140 uh, consumer attribute signals uh, based on which we decide what is the best uh, product to offer what is the best content to offer also what uh, we are realizing is um, and and uh, even vinod also touched upon that point uh, past patterns alone uh, doesn't determine what she will buy because of she uh, getting influenced day by day uh by various other thing which is outside of that category and when you are sort of surfing through insta uh you see something and from that you in get inspired you don't know how it is affecting your category your brand it might be uh, uh ethnic where she might be looking at but it would change the way she will buy a beauty product so all of this are linked we are trying to sort of bring all of this together uh for us uh the way we are looking at it uh, it is not just online and offline it is integration of online offline and content and your ability to uh, personalize all the three uh, make it relevant in an extremely non linear journey the way customer buys today uh, she might get inspired by a content and then visit an offline store and see something and end up buying some very very different product and she expects uh, if she visits the offline store and she's an existing online customer to know who that customer is what she has bought and same visa we from offline to online uh, and we are trying to solve for that problem it is here and now uh, and if one platform irrespective of whichever industry it is in uh, customer expects a similar sort of experience across industries it's just an That's app true. so the expectation for if insta can know the consumers preferences the expectation from us as a beauty end to end solution provider with content commerce product capability to be very very similar so that's a challenge for us and we are trying to solve for it yeah i mean very rightly said right so if i have let's say wish listed a couple of products in the app and if i walk into a store i i expect that the that the sales guy there would know that these are my preferences this is my skin type this is my preferred brands and they should kind of start recommending those that's that's the ideal scenario but of uh, real life is way way i mean we're still kind of uh, there's a lot of uh, distance uh, so yes so so uh, uh, rajneesh uh, so what do you so again right this entire non linear customer journey we we talked about or we spoke from a brand perspective but of course it comes with a lot of operational challenges it's yep. it, there is a lot of back end uh that needs to be kind of aligned with the with this entire uh, ideology of keeping it consistent across platform so what are your views on this so uh personalization is a to me is a very broad term it's not like yes. getting your name embossed on your Absolutely, on your back yeah. right it's it's about uh fulfilling a shopper's desire yes and and for retailers uh 
which is extremely competitive industry uh, uh, you have to ensure that the experience is seamless uh, in this digital native world today, which puts pressure on them to ensure that their back of the store operations, in store operations, and outside the store operations are seamlessly linked so that you don't lose a customer, right? Today, uh, one would expect that if I have researched or I have I've seen this new style on, in a new Netflix video on Insta or on Netflix, that style is available on a specific brand. I am able to go to the store, get my size. And if I am not able to do that, the store, I expect the store associate to really tell me uh, if I can order online there and then, right? So that's the level of that's the kind of personalization today's demanding consumer is looking at. It's not just, you know, as I said, embossing a name on, yeah, on, yeah. Your, on your apparel, but it's, it's really about sensing the needs, uh, analyzing that data, and being proactive about it, which essentially means that you've got to fix your backend. Uh, you need to know where your inventory is. You need to be able to demand correctly, uh, de uh, demand forecast correctly. You have to have empowered store associates who understand the, the new generation is, is uh, not only bothered about price and style, they're also bothered about stuff like sustainability. So they want to know uh, if this fabric is, is, comes from genuine sources or not, right? Uh, so which again puts a lot of pressure on retailers to train the store associates in the right manner. And finally, how do you ensure a seamless experience uh, of following back with the customer once he's made that purchase? So I, I, th I think for retailers, it's, it's, it's not an easy word today, uh, especially, in, in, especially when the margins are so thin. Uh, managing inventory, managing style, uh, I, I would hate to put myself on the other side shoes. Yes, of course. And uh, uh, Nayan, if I can actually ask you to also give your, uh, so, I mean, yes, we are talking about personalization. Even from a sporting goods uh, industry perspective, I think there's a lot of focus that the government of India is bringing to the industry. Uh, there's a lot of export that happens for the, for the country. So, uh, and of course, there is, I, I would, I would uh, like to believe and I've seen enough proof that there is rising awareness of people also trying to, even invest in their own fitness, get into sports, get, uh, so how do you kind of see the industry also evolving and uh, personalization kind of taking uh, the lead here? So for a sporting industry, personalization was always there. Uh, people course. used to uh, print their name on the jerseys yeah. and uh, feel like uh, uh, Sachin Tendulkar or a Virat Kohli <laughs> or something. But uh, this was already there and now it has taken a new level. So now people expect that uh, not just a name printed, but my favorite number is so and so, and you should directly tell me that this number, uh, this number will suit you or this number will uh, have an uh, impact on you. Okay. How uh, similarly uh, personalizations also have uh, means uh, in our case we are just experimenting as of now, but uh, we are trying to have. Uh, laser machines in our stores. So we are experimenting from one store that okay. uh, not just embossing like uh, Sir said, but uh, how to have a name on the cricket bat itself okay. directly or not uh, a team team logo on the bat. So uh, we are just trying to analyze what uh, are people ready to ex uh, accept this or something. like. So personalization in, uh, is very close to the sporting industry. <laughs> from building itself. Of course. Yeah. And, I, and you actually touched upon a very important point for personalization to work. Experimentation is a very important, plays a very important role. Till the time you do not experiment enough, you're not doing an ABCT testing and kind of understanding what the users are resonating with, what's the kind of messaging that's working, these are the offers that are working, this category works better. You, the personalization to kind of follow the hyper personalization or the hyper local personalization that we are speaking about is a little difficult to kind of implement. So uh, asking you and I'll just hand over the, uh, you the mic, what is 
what is your entire outlook on this uh, on the experimentation piece as well okay. yeah thanks hi so uh, we are all talking about personalization experimentation you know yes. and analyzing the data you know but th this is the last mile according yeah. to me we have to think a little bit on the first mile when if you have to analyze the data we have to capture it well you know? so how fast how quickly how accurately you know we can capture the data and that's why we advocate some of the technology uh, enablements uh, for data capture you know yes. so it's uh, like uh, like when as a rfid solution provider we always say that we are the blockchain of the physical world you know so we trace back the source you know so uh, the data is uh, whether it is on a on a product or any sku or uh, on a on a on a consumer uh, and his parameters or his demographics you know how ag how agile or how quick or how accurate you can be on the data capture with the inventory solution how the right product is made available uh, if it is omni channel fulfillment and we we are all talking about personalization and predicting but i think uh, we should along with prediction we could we should also think a little bit on prescription how can we get into prescribing the right product to the customer you know and that is what we all think you know on the fulfillment end so uh, personalization as uh, rajneesh mentioned is uh, very very horizontal and uh, there are a lot of flavors we can keep on talking about it but uh, we we should you know uh, just focus a little bit more on what, are, what if we have what flavors we want and how do we plan our roadmap on the data capture side of it you yes. know this is what i want i need to add you know on yeah this. yeah so yeah. so let's let's take this forward right let's talk about data the importance of data till the time you don't have that in place nothing else kind of follows everything falls flat so i'll circle back to you vinod so your uh, what what is your take here so ideally as uh, ashim mentioned i think it is important that the backbone which is technology is first equipped and is set up right yes. to ensure that the data can get processed because data capture as a process will can definitely happen you will you'll get a lot of information a lot of data on customers if you decide to probably start uh, conversing with them at the time of the bill checkouts or any other format even online you eventually capture at the time of order details all the customer information but if you don't have the right technology in the back end to process it and and make sense out of that that becomes a big big challenge for a lot of lot of uh, uh, retailers uh, it is extremely important that you choose the right technology there is a, there is a plethora of technologies that are available to do to do data crunching to do data analysis and there are buzzwords that keep on coming every year <laughs> they they say it starts with the big data then it becomes yeah. data lake then becomes xyz so every year there is a buzzword on data that keeps on circulating with everyone but not necessarily uh, applicable to everyone so it is important that uh, to to understand what the data is the right technology is to be selected and basis the right technology uh, go ahead and uh, and do the crunching and make sense of the information that you're doing for example take rfid itself I mean, what asim was talking about on rfid uh, can rfid uh, make life simpler for my customer or make the experience better the answer is yes why can't why can't it do that i mean it was always envisaged that rfid will only make my inventory management better or it will only look at uh, tracking and tracing the product better but uh, why can't we use and and it is it is a use case that is now getting used now but uh, uh, there is enough and more uh, in terms of customer picking up a product and giving him an information giving her an information on a screen immediately on the using rfid knowing that what she has picked up those kind of use cases is only going to make the feel uh, make the customer feel far far better and uh, and confident on the product that she is probably buying for so technologies like these in the back end have to be deployed right and the right use cases to be enabled for the customers which will probably uh, do the cut for the customer yeah one of the experiences i personally have had is and this 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 links back to the inventory a lot of times i see advertisements of this great uh, great kurta or this can be a great dress or something of that sort i really like it i click on i click on the banner i land on the website or the app it's not in stock right so why are we putting it up right so your what you're targeting your customers with what is what is uh, what uh, the offers that you're running it should be run but also uh, keeping the inventory in my, uh, in mind if you do not have an inventory of a certain skew or a certain category it it kind of just leads to a lot of abandonment rate and bounce rate yeah yes please yeah i'll i'll add to some of these a uh, couple of points uh, first is 
uh, it's very important uh, to have the right tools and uh, technology solution for you to sort of analyze data. But uh, we believe even more important is to have the right process and the charter for how you utilize data. The way we have done it um, are we have very deep focus on events, uh, especially we use uh, Omniture. Uh, our definition of uh, events is extremely strong and we ensure that the library is published. Every single function in the organization is unified in terms of understanding what does that event mean. From event it gets converted to data and then the correlation between the two. From data then the, its correlation with metric, metric to insight, insight to then start building actual data products and then your all ML and uh, AI starts sitting on top of it. But the importance is, is the definition itself, whichever model tool that you use, uh, it becomes very critical. Uh, and it is uh, on us to uh, understand the depth of what all you can do if you have consistent definition and consistent way of measuring it across the board. Uh, and specific to the problem that you sort of mentioned that uh, inventory unavailability, uh, even though it is getting promoted, some of these are today's solved problem. So this used to be a problem about three, four years back uh, where most of us were using uh, batch processing for sharing feed with Meta, Google and all. Today it's a real time feed. Uh, we have the ability to share uh, a real time inventory situation. If you are feeling that there is a frequency or run rate on a certain stock is a little higher, you can have uh, your buffer built in. All of that is possible. It's a really bad experience. If uh, a consumer who spent engaged with your ad ends up landing onto the platform and seeing the product is not available. Uh, today, we are at far better position to sort of solve some of these problem. But yes, you need to have a deeper understanding of how to utilize some of these data points and how do you move from asynchronous model to a real time uh, way of using information. Yeah, and, and one thing when we're talking about data is also data democratization. It should not be that the data is only available with the analyst teams, with the data science teams, with the data engineers. It should be accessible to your merchandising, your, uh, your marketeers, your business users, your product people, because at the end of the day, they are the ones who are actually have or facing the customers, right? So, uh, Lokesh, if I can answer, uh, help you uh, ask uh, for your inputs here. Yeah, I mean, data has to be available with all the teams. There's, no, I mean, no doubt about it. Uh, but how you will, uh, how will you enable it? So the thing is, uh, you need to first have the right technology stack, which give an access to the data to all the team members in the right way, in a rightful manner. See, there's a lot of analysis which goes on uh, by the multiple teams. So sometimes it's a duplication of the work. So you need to have a single repository where the most of the analysis is already been done and people can actually start consuming those data. If you spend too much time on analysis and each of the team member if keep doing analysis, you might end up you know, wasting your time. So somewhere you need to converge the data, create a repository of your findings and then use that as a benchmark to, you know, uh, create your plans. But again, as I mentioned that uh, collecting data is one thing, how you're going to use is, is something, uh, you know, so now uh, when we talk about uh, personalization, we always, uh, from a, definitely from a pure retail perspective, it's upselling and cross-selling. From our perspective, it's also, uh, you know, uh, a, a kind of a consistent experience. So uh, can I look uh, the data that, okay, this therapist is giving this service to these customers and these customers are happy. So can I ensure whenever these customer comes in, uh, uh, they will, they've been uh, getting service only from these therapists. So their experience is consistent. So other than cross-selling, upselling, there are personalization which exist in terms of the uh, consistent experience for a customer which also kind of feed into what's the repeat rate of your existing Absolute. customer. See, as long as your customer experience is good, yes. the chances of you being retaining them is always higher. Yes, and, and again, right, for your existing customers, you have more data, right? For, for anonymous, new, first-time customers, acquisition is the main goal, so you're just spending money to kind of get them. See, every time you interact with the customer, be it online channel, be it physical channel, there's always an opportunity to cross-sell and upsell. So every touch point is an opportunity. Got it. Uh, uh, Ready, I wanted to make a couple of comments on, yeah, yeah, on this entire discussion around data. One is, uh, Vinod already touched upon, is uh, uh, getting the data the, right, the first time right. right. So you capture the data at the source, uh, 
one is that it can really help you prove provenance of where you bought your material from uh, but i think the other angle about data is also about data security and privacy Absolutely. right we are talking about the customers personal details private details and if they fall into the wrong hands it it can have a adverse effect impact on brand loyalty uh, and in that sense uh, whenever you're capturing data or dealing with data you need to ensure that your infrastructure is really really secure yes all right and for example you are working in warehouses uh, where you your your uh, workforce is is not a skilled workforce they're contracted workforce you're working with 3 pl operators or 4 pl operators how do you ensure there is governance of data how do you ensure that the devices which you are using are as secure as one can get so that your data doesn't leak out right uh, not only is it personal data for of your consumers it's also competitive data for you as a company yeah. so i think there is one angle around data security and data privacy which also needs to be taken into account when we're talking about personalization absolutely with the and with the dpdp bill right now being introduced and it kind of now coming or be uh, becoming active and of course this is just the first version there would be future versions coming in that are far more uh, that are far more strict and that requires brands to be much more uh, yeah so again i also deal with a lot of brands and i have also seen a, a gradual shift in the way they handle pii data right now that has become their gold mine because that's their first party data with third party cookies also kind of going out this is the gold mine that they are sitting on that, that they would want to invest in and the easiest or uh, the i mean with the existing martech that's that's one of the ways that you kind of go about ensuring that the, it's secure and it's uh, it kind of also is encrypted in some of the other forms so that it doesn't go into the hands of a lot of uh, unwanted people uh sorry i thought you had a couple of comments yeah i i i just wanted to just add on to that you know a lot of large customers we've seen put a lot of emphasis on securing their financial data for example yes right yes the cloud is secure their erp is secure but we don't see that level of uh, governance on their inventory data for example right and i would really urge the audience to really look at those aspects because data leaks can happen anywhere right <laughs> so uh, i mean if yeah. it can happen with facebook it can happen with any brand <laughs> yeah so uh, ashim now maybe uh, i so uh, i'm coming back to personalization so we spoke about what's been the trend now we are going hyper local etc but as a trend where do you see kind of, where do you see that going in the let in the next 2 years 3 years 5 years how how will it evolve yeah uh, just one point on the yes. data you know which i want to touch base it's not only about data security and privacy but also uh, uh, responsibility of the data how responsible the brand is in using the data because customer expectations can be contrasting what you find as a good service where you expect a store associate to know everything about you yeah. and some other customer might have a contrasting opinion so personalization on data is uh, required on this angle as well that for this particular customer he likes to be greeted by his first name and some other customer might feel the it, it's creepy you know, yeah it's creepy <laughs> you know so <laughs> so that as i mentioned earlier and if you look at the future you know the, the, there are many many use cases built around this lot of analytics uh, happening you know like it's not only on the uh, touching the consumers but also like if you talk of fashion and lifestyle uh, we deal in some kind of analytics which we called as fitting room analytic you know where we know what is attracting a eyeball and getting into a fitting room but never gets sold and what never goes to the fitting room and always reaches the point of sale you know so this is also personalization on the next season i you know? have but no idea this is also <laughs> and this is i mean and this is all happening with the same kind of uh, it's just a use case on the same technology platform and as the store associates and the consumers and the brands are experiencing the technology you know such use cases uh, will keep on happening but uh, if you look at the future and where we are going i think we should be not overdoing it we should uh, uh always uh, the the term which i want to introduce here or which i just i'm always keep on thinking about is data empathy 
<laughs> so uh, everybody is talking of data privacy, data security, but data empathy, and we should always uh, look at it very responsibly. And uh, use cases can be built on, but it has to uh, have measurable business benefits. And then, yeah, that's about it. And future is boundless. <laughs> no, I, I agree. And every, as, as you said, right, every customer has a threshold. I might not want to be contacted on a WhatsApp, but there would be certain people who would only have that as a preferred channel. I would not want to be contacted after 7, p uh, 7 p.m. There are some who would like to, so again, every customer comes with their own preferences, own uh, expectations. And of course, if I'm a loyal customer, I think I have the right to expect that from a brand that they will keep that un in consideration when they call me. Uh, uh, right. So yeah. So uh, Nayan. Uh, so in terms of again, we were, we were talking about personalization. We were talking about the importance of data. Uh, so you actually also touched upon personalization from from your industry perspective. But what role does data play in that in that scheme of things for you guys? Can you just please repeat? Yes. I so basically. So again, when it comes to data collection, currently, are you? also tracking or collecting data end to end digitally? Are you also marrying that data with your offline transactional data, your commerce data, your inventory data? How are you kind of going about that? Yeah, so uh, we don't have a single technology which we are using it. We have, uh, we have bits and pieces of multiple uh, technology. Uh, something is like um, the transactional data offline of the store ERP data. Then there is a data of the website, uh, the how, where people are clicking, what is the heat map of the website and what uh, different things, uh, that data. Then there are, uh, there is a personalization, uh, personalization data for, for the ads, which we are, spare, which we are doing. So like, uh, showing the ad to the particular customer who, who is, uh, available offline, who, who is either shopped offline somewhere, some, at some amount of time, but not not coming back to us or in an offline store. So that kind of data to be used in online and uh, targeting them. But with the, their uh, preference uh, of the what they have purchased with us. So like uh, if uh, someone is uh, into a uh, badminton and so we try to uh, target them with the badminton kind of products or similar category kind yeah. of products. So that kind of uh, data utilization which we uh, which we do and collect the da uh, the data that is collected uh, mostly uh, like uh, the panelists just said that uh, data should not be in uh, a technical tech person who is having the data and not uh, not with the other uh, merchandising team or any other team. So we do have uh, some kind of uh, pre uh, preset reports uh, which. Uh, which are directly uh, shared with the particular person that this kind of merchandising we can we can look uh, look forward for the coming season or like that this thing is thank you yeah. so uh, let's get into a little bit of festive vibe right we are sitting in the middle of ganpati season uh, we had rakhi we had janmashtami 15 days later 15 20 days later we have navratri kicking off so a huge huge festive season kind of coming up and i would think retail uh, retail as well as travel, if I can say, is one of are the industries that really look forward. A big, big contribution of this festive season comes uh, the, uh, in terms of revenue, in terms of orders, in terms of engagement. Kind of comes in these in these three four months. So, uh, Vinod, what what are you expecting uh, this festive season? What record are you going to break? Which new never revenue numbers are we going to see? I'm not sure about records though, but uh, yes, uh, uh, obviously uh, this festive is probably one of those uh, uh, festive seasons where there are no restrictions at all for Absolutely. anyone, <laughs> which is which itself uh, is a big cheer for all of us. And uh, yes, uh, obviously the customer is, she's, she's wanting to come out and, and share and cheer the entire spirit that she is, uh, she is trying to celebrate on. So yes, uh, it, it, is, it is going to be according to, at least my personal opinion is uh, this, this festive is going to be quite large for retailers like us, uh, maybe the largest ever. I, I hope so. And uh, <laughs> Yo, kudos to that. Yeah. Yes. And uh, yeah, uh, uh, the customer behaviors, obviously uh, the intention of the customer is to go ahead and, and spend the money and, and feel the spirit. So uh, we are expecting for sure uh, uh, a, a pent up kind of a requirement that will for sure be there. Uh, I'm sure all other retailers also think so. 
and uh, yeah i mean uh, uh, that's probably uh, the way it will it will pan out yeah and and lokesh a uh, bundle with the festive season there is a wedding season also that's right on the charts Correct. and of course it's it's big for you guys yes so our wedding season actually starts uh, like a two months earlier Of because course, you cannot take service early. right now and tomorrow get married right so it's a regime you need to follow so we treat you for like good one and a half month before you actually get on to the ground okay, so your festive season has already started it will start from uh, like middle of october sort of and okay. but our biggest month is december so okay. uh, we get uh, you know generally in uh, early winter there's a lot of anti aging services demand which grows in however because of the winter hair free demand goes down hair reduction services so how uh, this summer is the month where we end up selling most anti aging services and pigmentations and other thing because of definitely a festive season at the same time marriages and all however the bridal uh, things start much before that somewhere in end of october and they'll continue till mid of december got it yeah and uh, i mean this conversation will not be complete if we do not talk about gen ai right gen ai the flavor of i mean the season so of course enough has been said about gen ai the kind of role it can play in retail uh, a couple of questions rajneesh if how do you kind of foresee gen ai again solving for the operational challenges or bringing in some kind of efficiencies that that currently have been all manual or have been prone to some or the other kind of errors right manual errors prakriti i i am not so familiar with gen ai gen okay. ai but uh, ai in general has started to make a lot of sense to a lot of retailers right yes. now right and uh, a lot of the stuff which uh, ashim and vinod and some of the others spoke about is essentially around demand forecasting especially in an environment where styles and 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 preferences change so quickly right how do you have retailers who can be extremely agile very quickly uh, and and that will depend on how efficient their supply chains are if you have an inefficient supply chain and you're saddled up with inventories uh in hundreds of thousands of a specific sku which doesn't sell out or which goes out of style very quickly uh then you're in a jam you you can't introduce a new style because your shelves are already full so how do you create a very lean uh supply chain very extremely efficient supply chain which is uh capable of you know uh ramp up and ramp down in a festive period very quickly right style changes how quickly you're able to liquidate your inventory like ashim said uh which are the skews which are going to the trial room Absolutely. which are the skews yeah. which have just not moved for 30 days right if that inside is available you can quickly you know let's say discount those and get them out to me that is business intelligence right i i i can't comment on that gbt uh, i'm i'm no no expert on that but i think most of our large retailers are really uh using very advanced technologies today and i'm really happy that uh indian retail is probably one of the front runners in use using ai today yeah and it's for sure that retailers who don't adopt these technologies will be left behind yes yes please uh, yeah just a point those. on what rajesh made the yeah Uh, i think uh, gen ai is now becoming a mainstream kind of a technology going forward uh, and uh, some things that were earlier probably only experimented for example uh, visual search or an image search is very much possible using gen ai now right uh, obviously uh, another big area uh, while everyone has been speaking about it uh, uh, moving to a predictive analytics Uh, which is uh, intelligent analytics coming out of it and and predicting what the behavior would be i think gen ai can really do a lot of lot of work in that space uh, also what we need to consider when we are looking at gen ai is there is always a bias of algorithm that it will bring in right uh, there's an algorithmic bias a, a tech word that we use most of the times and this this algorithmic bias that is there has to be really so seen through correctly and right analytics are to be picked out of that because if we only depend on ai or any other technology which is giving you an output and if the algorithm bias kicks in you would do something which is very very similar for a very long period of time not even realizing that you are probably go move to a completely different direction and one example of that is uh, today if if a, if a pilot is let's say uh, flying a plane 
one degree of, of moving away uh, from his own uh, uh, direction or the path that is set would probably end up uh, in, in Chennai instead of New Delhi. Uh, I mean, that's the kind of impact that it causes. I mean, I'm exaggerating obviously, but that it, it causes a significant impact. So, so that is something that we need to be very, very, uh, uh, what you say, I mean, uh, careful about. Algorithmic bias can really mess up your analytics like, uh, like a lot. I mean, that's the reason we have to be very careful with it. Yeah, I agree uh, to some of these pitfalls and it happens with all uh, uh, newly launched technology when you are in sort of cameless curve. Uh, once it matures, uh, we would have solved this problem. We already asked using uh, Gen AI very early uh, sort of uh, use cases. Uh, um, as uh, in the e-commerce, we use a lot of these uh, campaign solutions, uh, which means we send out CRM cus uh, customized campaigns at a different cohort level. Uh, mature organizations are able to create about anything between 50 to 100 cohorts. Uh, what uh, Gen AI uh, offers is our ability to even go uh, sharper. Uh, we did some testing, so almost created for a single day campaign of about 10,000 campaigns uh, with highly personalized cohorts uh, with a very specific message and uh, on the fly image creation. So there are certain efficiencies that you obviously will get. Because uh, if you have to create those creatives, uh, the process of creating itself is anything between 24 to 48 hours. If you have to have your in-house content creative team and then building content on top of it, it takes a certain amount of time. And also you lose the ability to personalize at that sort of large scale. Uh, here, definitely we saw the impact on efficiency. Uh, on the uh, uplift on uh, metrics, it was almost at par. Uh, our previous campaign to this campaign. These are the learning that we will bring in and some of the point even uh, sort of you know, touched upon. Uh, where we are very conscious that it is not taking us into a path which is very different from how we want to set up what is our brand communication, brand tone, uh, our voice, etc. All of this also there is a chance that it can get diluted when you use excessively in a certain fashion or uh, it can also take in the voice of one of your uh, CRM lead, if she is the one or he is the one who is creating those content and then if starts creating multiple bases, some of the content that created in the past, there are chances. Uh, but uh, we believe there are tons and tons of use cases. It is definitely going to increase the uh, efficiency for us retailers. Uh, and uh, in the long run, it will definitely will have value for consumers. We are trying to figure out how do we uh, capture customer voice and start talking to them in their language itself. So those are things that Gen AI today offers as a solution. We are still in very early experimentative stage. And a follow up question. So uh, in Gen AI itself, right, what are the, let's say the ethical considerations also that we should be cognizant of as a brand because it's, it's all algorithmic modeling on uh, truckloads of data that you are capturing. Yeah, so uh, what we do is there are two levels of this. Uh, one is uh, the data points that you're considering uh, to create an output, which is what one level, which means is it uh, consumers PII information, which I'm using uh, and based on which I am generating uh, an uh, output, which is on one side. Second is the, uh, the work that I'm currently doing. What is the impact it has on consumers life? If, uh, for example, if it is a, highly impactful area. For example, in beauty, um, we collect information about customer's skin type, hair type, uh, and there are different ways in which you can view this, right? Yeah. And I am collecting this information, giving flexibility for customer to go and check what information she has provided. At any point in time, she can go and delete any data or add data. Uh, how I am utilizing that information and having that transparency can be viewed very differently. Uh, and that sort of uh, obviously uh, brings in the responsibility as a platform to use that information, be highly transparent about letting them know how I am doing, what I am doing, how do I know that this is the best product for you. Uh, we try and sort of uh, give uh, as much visibility as possible, which is almost like a transparency in uh, data utilization. And we have built capability around that. Yeah, that's extremely sensitive data, right? Which cons consumers would not want it to be out. So, Ashim, again, your your viewpoint here on this, again, when we are talking about ethical considerations, when we are talking about Gen AI, the concept that you spoke about, skews that kind of go to the trial room but do not get added into the shopping cart, right? that, that seems to me like, uh, again, a kind of a Gen AI solution. So, 
again around that what what are the ethical considerations that you should yeah, that you foresee that we should keep in mind yeah i mean yeah. Just one thing which I would like to add on the festivity, <laughs> if you allow me, you know. Yes, sorry. So during the festive season, you know, it's a moment of truth for we solution providers because it's a load test of the solutions which we have provided. You know, so if everything works in the festive. Secondly, uh, it is not a very good time also for us because if I take any solution to Vinod during festive season, he'll say Diwali ke baad. <laughs> you know, so it is kind of a lean period for us. But we wish all. A very very successful festive season, so that we have better budgets for the <laughs> next year. Uh, so yeah, I mean, see, uh, we are all in in a business, um, and as a uh, responsible corporate citizen, you know, in whatever we are doing, you know, the ethics matter in whatever. So whether it is laid down in the statutory or the regulatory or the privacy or whatever bylaws, or it is your company's own policies, you know. So. I think it is a basic essence, and as I mentioned earlier, the the only thing, how do you define what is ethical and non-ethical? Only if you are able to empathize with your consumer, your buyer, and you are able to get into their shoes. You know, like you are, it's just an eye color. You know, uh, and if you look at it, it is eye color. You know, so <laughs> it the, so the ethics is typically you know it is the leaders the uh, the responsibility as a corporate citizen uh, and a citizen of a country uh, where we are having this sensitive data. It is as good and as sensitive as the leaders who are handling or sitting on top of the data. And I can speak more about it, but in the limited time frame, I think this is the tone on which uh, it should be looked at from the ethical perspective. Yeah, somebody else wants to add. <laughs> okay. Okay, I think uh, we are also just on top of an hour. So if I can request each of you it, uh, just to reply, revert in an, uh, in one word. Um, and uh, it's, uh, I have a couple of questions, so we'll just go uh, uh, round robin, right? Uh, what is the one thing that you think is indispensable from building a great customer experience, right? That one thing that's that should be priority number one for your brand we'll start with you Vinod and we'll come this way I think that it, it's difficult to pick just one uh, there are definitely a lot of them uh, but uh, uh, what I think is uh, 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 understanding the the behavior to start with because everything is hinged on to that uh, the customer behavior and uh, whatever you do you eventually are wanting the customer to buy your products and, and knowing what the customer is expecting or knowing the behavior of the customer with you specifically. And, and mind you, the customers behave differently with different retailers also. I mean, for a fashion apparel retailer, within the fashion apparel itself, she might behave differently. I, we have Westside and Zudio, the same customer buying in Westside and the same customer buying in Zudio will behave differently. So yeah. obviously, uh, the behavior is very important to understand in the context of what she is looking from you and basis that uh, take, the, take the next step. So data, according to you, that's the that's the core. Yes. Yes. I think as a as a technology platform seller, uh, my would be would be for an efficient supply chain. <laughs> <laughs> okay, bias kicking in here. Yes, over to you. Sorry. So for us is like trust and relationship with the customers. So trust, customer the, trust. Cu yeah, customer trust uh, is uh, on the top, uh, top is most priority. And then building a relationship with them is the most. Got it. Yes, over to you. For us is always customer experience. Uh, we always think that uh, put customer in the center and then you design your process technology around it. So customer experience is something uh, which is, you know, uh, Kaya is very important for Kaya. Got it. Oh, yes. Yeah, very similar. Like uh, we work customer backwards for whatever that you want to solve for, and uh, focus a lot on input, uh, and output will automatically happen. So that's the belief is. For us, it's uh, customization. You know, okay. so uh, though all retailers are in the similar line of business, everybody has got their own uh, way of or uh, thinking or methodology or functionality. So customization for us is the one word which is uh, the most important in our business. And I'll inverse the question and I'll inverse the order also. What is that one thing that a customer is looking for when they are browsing a website, walked into a store, 
installed the app that one thing that you that the customer like of course it's not the product but what is it that they they are looking for they are looking for i think if if i look at from my perspective Sorry. So from my perspective it's the uh, it's the uh, it's the positioning of the brand how trustworthy the brand is you know the brand the, image the brand the image, brand the brand image okay. yeah uh the way uh, we see it is how we can inspire a uh, consumer and uh, being in uh, e-commerce tech industry uh, we feel that uh, vertical category uh, etc is just incidental uh, you have the ability to sort of provide all kinds of solutions for consumers whenever wherever it is required so we try to inspire uh, with that's every that's a really good one thanks see, i think uh, the customer expect brand to listen to them at whatever channel they are in see the gone are those days where you push used to push the customer to use whatsapp or d2c right now they want to choose their own you know mode of communication so as long as you are there to listen to the customer i think they will be happy okay thanks yes sir. so for us uh, customer uh, customer says that know me and i will love you <laughs> okay no as a uh, as a customer myself uh, i sometimes would look at very something very very basic uh when i walk into a store can i get the size which i want the color i want and can i check out quickly right <laughs> so i mean there is there is one veneer about you know really big personalization but some there are some rudimentary stuff which customers demand today right uh, in a digital world where you can get grocery in 10 minutes why does it take me 15 minutes to check out Uh, when you're buying ten thousand rupees of, you know, apparel, so so to me availability is uh, you know what I want, where I want, immediately ability of a store associate to answer my questions, those are you know very very basic, but I think really uh, enamor a customer. Understood. Uh, so ensuring that the trust and the expectation of the customer is met. is is what the focus according to me i, I think we will all want to do it on uh, primarily when she is, when when she is walking into our stores she has a certain expectation that she has uh, of finding the right product and the trust that she will find the right product with us both these things are very very important to to gain because the the fact that she has walked into your store is she has made that decision earlier to buy something from you right and and if that is the case i don't want to fall flat in front of her and not give her the product and that is what is important that's true uh any last words from either of you otherwise i think uh, we are good to close the discussion thank you so much thank you to our esteemed panelists for sharing your experiences i think for me at least this discussion has been very very insightful i hope it has been the same for you guys uh thank you thank you so much thanks mm -hmm.